Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus,
So that in the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying, praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. So, who are you? Who are you? Your identity goes to the, the deepest sense of you, your values, your life, your choices, who you are becoming, the meaning of the life that you're living, the, the decisions you make. Who are you? And I think that's a fair question to ask, and especially at Christmas, where new life comes into the world. Jesus comes into the world. And the, the Word, the Word, the eternal Word of God was made flesh and dwelt among us, among humanity. And the name given to him, as we, we heard before his birth, uh, the name of Jesus, the name that would be given when he was circumcised, as would all young men of his religious tradition and on the eighth day, and he would receive his name. But we say, it's not just the handle. It's not just how he would be called when it was time for dinner or something. It's his identity. It's who he was. So with his name came his vocation. With his name came his mission. With his name came his identity. It was who he was and what he would do if he was going to live up to his name. Uh, as we said earlier, uh, you know, sometimes people need to clear their name, need to establish their name, need to live up to their name. And that was the case with, with Jesus. I mean, he's received a name, but it's really much more. It's who he is and who he will be. And the real question for us is not just who was he, but who is he now for us? And indeed, who are we in his name? Because we also 
claim the name of Christians. I mean, if someone asks you, who are you? What's your identity? What is your life about? I, I hope that comes early to mind. That that's our identity. That's why we're here. And so all the beautiful things that we do, and the, the, the music and the, the vestments and the color and the flowers and all that, but that's just an outward invisible sign of an inward life and identity that we give ourselves to, that we commit ourselves to, that we engage by name. But it's not just a word, it's a life. And if it's ever just a word, then it's become something much less than it's supposed to be. And then we've become someone much less than we're called to be. And that is to follow the life named Christian. To follow the life named Christian. So that involves us in a variety of ways. It involves our decision making. It involves our choices. It involves what we do next. What are your next steps? I mean, interestingly, it falls for us on January 1st, liturgically speaking. We have no way of knowing this event that we celebrate actually happened at the beginning of a year, but it's well-placed, I think, certainly well-placed relative to the time when we celebrate Jesus' birth, but also for us, it's a new year. It's a new year. Now it's 2023, and so it's an occasion to assess where we've been and look at where we're going, you know, the proverbial resolution. Well, I've, I've never been a big fan of New Year's resolutions. I like to be making them all along and not just at the beginning of the year. I think about the wellness center that Victoria and I would go to, and usually there'd be a lot of people exercising about the first week or two of January, but it would tend to kind of drop off toward the end of the week and later in the month and certainly by spring. And so I'm just saying, sometimes those resolutions seem to wash out, but we begin a new year and celebrate new life in Christ, that God comes among us. And it's not just what happened with Jesus 2,000 plus years ago, but God comes to us constantly. God is breaking into our lives. God is seeking other, if you will, forms of coming in the flesh, incarnation, literally the incarnation, the capital T incarnation is Jesus born, son of God, son of man in the world, in the flesh, not just an abstract principle or a law or a philosophy or something off beyond the clouds, but God in the flesh with us. And that continues by others who are not fully human and fully divine as he was, but who nevertheless in the flesh continue that life, continue that name. And so that's what we're invited to constantly. We, uh, you know, we say the creed after the sermon. We will renew our baptismal vows from time to time during the course of the year. Some will make our baptismal vows at some time during the year. But we continue to live it out. That's what I'm saying is we accept an identity as our own. And that really does work out well because we may find, and it seems paradoxical, but that the more we turn our lives over to God, the more we live into the name and identity of Christians, the more fully ourselves we are, the more fully the people we're individually meant to be, we become. So that this is a process that continues. It's not just a one and done. I mean, we've got today's decisions to make, but then there'll be tomorrow's, and then there'll be Tuesdays and Wednesdays and next month. And next, in other words, we continue on this path, and hopefully, hopefully, we live into this name and identity even more so. We can continue to grow in faith. And at least in, in, in this mortal life, it's my experience, we've never arrived in that we never come to a place that there's not more to learn, more to grow, more to do. We can engage more fully, that God who's beyond us continually beckons us closer and we can respond. We too can say the yes of faith 
as, as Mary did, to an offer that she couldn't have possibly understood in his fullness. I'm not sure I can say I understand it in his fullness, but I get the idea. And so maybe it can be that way for you too, that the full meaning of living into Christian life is ultimately beyond us because we continue to discover it. But you get the idea. It's going to have something to do with love. It's going to have something to do with generosity. It's going to have something to do with forgiveness. It's going to have something to do with including others and helping others who need what you have to offer. And we can step into it one, one little baby step at a time, but we can continue with it and know that there's still more to discover, more to explore. And as long as we're in this life, we can continue to grow and know our Lord better and be surprised by the revelations and manifestations of his presence. But to do that, to live it, we need to claim the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that, all may be well. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our words may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. And that they may be delivered from their stress. Give to the departed, especially Sarah, eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heaven. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We offer prayers of well-being for Sarah, Becky, Jim, Marge, Jim, Beverly, and David, and Greg, as well as all those who suffer. We also remember those in the armed services, both home and abroad, and all who have suffered result of the COVID-19 pandemic, including Kathy and Dudley and Greg. We also ask your prayers for those on our diocesan intercessory prayer list, Emmanuel Episcopal Church Winchester, the Reverend Jim Trimble Rector. Today in the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the bishop, clergy, and laity of the Anglican Church of Mexico, La Iglesia Anglicana de Mexico celebrate the birthdays of Michael Razor, Mike Barnard, Abby Camp, and Maggie Camp. The anniversaries of Laura Freeman and Bill Kingsbury. And we ask your prayers for those who have gone before us. Linda Morrissey, Roman Ratliff, Mary Margaret Tall, Jack Razor, and Sarah Eisen. I invite your own prayers and thanksgivings and silently or aloud. O oh God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and 
walk all the way away to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand as you're the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. As we have heard on high, singing sweetly through the night, from the mountains here we that going the train delight. Prayer D. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you, O Lord our God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever, fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your regions. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them, and giving voice to every creature under heaven. We are claiming you and glorify your name as we sing. Holy, Yeah. <laughs> 
works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us the hope of salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death and rising from the grave destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you as heavenly father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with him, he took bread. And when he given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit, may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts to your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and all the saints who found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. 
And as our Savior Christ has taught us, we're bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.